It is NFL Draft Day. I am so excited. We are so excited. We're going to talk about where we think all these prospects are going to land. We have a lot of fun on today's episode. Make sure you subscribe. We've got so much more coming soon. Enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. (laughs) Something going on today, Jay? Oh, man, I'm so excited. His body is ready. I feel like I'm just vibrating. And you look like you're vibrating. I mean, you are, uh, your anticipation for the NFL draft is unmatched. I am beyond stoked, excited, every single adjective you could ever use. Well, I, we got draft predictions on the show today. We're going to walk through the fantasy relevant players that we've been talking about for months that everybody is excited to see land on that perfect roster and have that perfect rookie season for your perfect dynasty team. Perfect. And uh, so we'll make our predictions on the show today and we'll talk through it all and it'll be a ton of fun. Welcome in one and all Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the fantasy footballers Thursday, April 25th. It is draft day. I know many of you, Jason, did you fulfill your yearly commitment to um, Kevin Costner? Uh, yes. I, it's got to be a once a year. Uh, I want all my draft picks. I want them back. All of them. You want them back? Yes. That's my favorite <laughs> quote from the movie is when he goes, I want my picks back. All of them. Because I am going to use that someday when I actually need my dynasty picks. And to be clear, this great cinematic masterpiece. Oh, stop. Is no stop extremely accurate to the what NFL actually happens and what happens and the value of picks. Like it's pretty much a documentary. So <laughs> it is. Uh, it is. It's not just your tradition. I know many people that watch that Best Picture nominee the day before the draft, and so only a nom, huh? It's shocking. Golden Globe winner though, makes sense. The Razzie winner. <laughs> Mike is not a big fan. Cause no one's a big fan. Yeah. Stop. Are we, we, I don't. I'm You're look. a fan because. Look, listen, listen. You're a fan because it's about football. It's about the NFL draft. I, I do. That's genuinely enough. That's enjoy, enough for me. I do genuinely enjoy watching it. I really, really enjoy watching. It, it is objectively Stop. terrible. I get that. But sometimes you like just bad stuff. Yeah, but we can't incur like cannot encourage this. Draft we, day two. We can. Oh. We all deserve better. Kevin. The, Mr. Costner, get on the line. The five-minute clip of Monty from Arizona, the GM, doing yeah. his trades from last year. I'll I'll watch that. Whatever the run length of draft day, I'll watch that clip that many times in a row before I'm watching draft day. We there's better content out there. They can give it to us. What what the real Monty Austin Fort draft day video didn't have was what Kevin Costner did, which was to leverage the fact that he had checked all of the blogs <laughs> out on the internet and that the general manager for this, <laughs> the Seattle Seahawks was getting, you know, lambasted in the media. Right. And so, you know, it, it's just, um, we'll move on. Thank all you. right, ultimatedraftkit.com. We've got Ultimate Draft Week happening right now, which means an exclusive giveaway. The headline there, if you pick up the Ultimate Draft Kit, Before Sunday, you'll get a chance to win a listener league spot. We're going to give away a signed Justin Jefferson jersey, signed Travis Etienne jersey, and all you have to do to enter is be one of the people that have pre-ordered the UDK at ultimatedraftkit.com by Sunday. It's great. I have one note. It is by Sunday. Not before. By Sunday. Okay. Is that (laughs) B-U-Y Sunday? Just by Sunday. No, we're saying Sunday is is eligible. People that, yeah, pre-order on Sunday will be part of it. Yes. Got it. Got and it. Um, in addition to that, if you have the UDK Plus, that's going to have the Dynasty Pass built in, which will have all of our rookie rankings, all of our rookie profiles, production profiles. People we're talking about today, and we're going to update that as soon as we can after the draft to make sure that the draft order is ready. All that stuff is live now, even though you're at pre-order pricing. So you can get uh, either version at ultimatedraftkit.com. Come and uh, get a chance to play with us in the Listener League and win a Justin Jefferson jersey and win a Travis Etienne signed jersey. All right, news time. 
news and notes from around the league. The Lions have signed Amon Ross St. Brown to a monstrous deal. Four years, more than $120 million, $77 million guaranteed. Get making paid. him the highest paid wide receiver in the league. Mike's number two fantasy uh, wide receiver so far as of this moment. Uh, he deserves it. He was awesome. He's consistent. He's unstoppable. He is essentially the new Michael Thomas, I feel like. Oh, oh there he is. <laughs> Caught me off guard. Well, I, ho I hope it doesn't go the direction that Michael Thomas went. So, no, no, no. So Stay quickly. healthy, Amon Ra. Stay healthy. Yeah. Meanwhile, Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson, just looking at that number going, mm, yeah, okay. okay. That's, that's a little tasty. Justin, Je how much guaranteed money is Jefferson going to get? <laughs> oh, man. 90 plus percent of NFL <laughs> revenue? Yes. <laughs> That'll be interesting. C.D. Lamb, Justin Jefferson just sitting out there waiting for the checks, which will come. Uh, Zach Wilson, Mike, um, what were your thoughts? On hey, I mean, we have there's this just some news now. <laughs> there's That's just – there's Sometimes there's we've, we've gotten lucky on the show and, <laughs> and news doesn't break right after we record, and many times it's worked out that way. That, Tuesday was not one of those times. And it doesn't matter. Zach Wilson to the Broncos. Yeah, he got traded. Another offseason of Wilson quarterback play heading to Denver. Um, the this NFL's the ultimate smoke screen. This is <laughs> NFL. We already made our move. We've got our We're quarterback. <laughs> we are not trading I, up for another quarterback. I had not thought about it like that, but that is. Don't worry about that's uh, five us. D chess. <laughs> Broncos are set. <laughs> we, We're good. Kirk Cousins and. Saquon Barkley, those offseason signings being investigated for tampering, discipline. They said that they weren't going to figure out the discipline before this upcoming draft, which means that the implications for lost draft picks could go into next year and future years. My hope is that what they meant was they will not have the discipline before the start of the NFL draft. They will have the discipline mid-draft. That'd be awesome. <laughs> it's a, oh, the the Falcons the, are on the clock. Psych! <laughs> that pick no longer exists. <laughs> that would be Dude. some super flex in Goodell. I mean, look, you want to you want to increase ratings on the NFL on the draft? Oh yeah. You have this. There's a wild card. The mayhem drop hits. Fantasy the, footballer style. If the pick literally dissolved yeah. like Back to the Future, and in its place it was like. You know, Kirk Cousins picture. Or <laughs> like literally as as the uh the, the Goodell's walking up, they're like, The pick is in. Nope. Yeah. No, we, no, it's not. <laughs> the pick by, has been traded the way, to the NFL. But they're like, just so you know, the Atlanta Falcons were going to draft <laughs> oh, this player. <laughs> that's well, here, here's a Falcon uh that needs to be talked about. Chase, no, Chase no, no Yes Yes. <laughs> I win! I win! It is a three-year running long bet. It back... Oh, yeah! That's the party music for yeah. me because... Go ahead, go ahead and tell them the news. Matt Ryan has officially retired, and August 12th of 2021, Mike and I made a bet about who would play longer, Carson Wentz or Matt Ryan, and I'm telling you, what a wild ride. <laughs> there were seven or eight lead changes in that that seemed like it was a done deal in the other direction. But if Carson, Carson Wentz, Wentz is under contract. It, oh, okay. He and is, he he's played, under contract? He is yeah, both under yes, contract he and he played more I was going to ask you if he, if he retired like tomorrow, if that would count as a tie. Nope, because okay. he, are, he already yeah, plays the Rams backup. Rams. And uh, only on this show would this news be part of the news. But former wide receiver Devin Funches has signed a one-year deal with the <laughs> Caribbean Storm of the Basketball League of Colombia. Congratulations, Devin. Yes. <laughs> Scrumptious. First NFL player to land a pro hoop contract after he was uh, part of the league. I, I, don't, I genuinely don't think he gets this deal done, if not for the fantasy footballer's nickname. We really built him up with Devin S. Scrumptious in that drop. So congratulations, get paid, play that ball. It's our fault. It's our uh, credit. Okay. 
Any other news, Mike, that you've got for us? You got anything that you're browsing? Any trades happening? I have not seen anything recently. It's worth noting that we're recording this show uh, later Wednesday, so yep. if news breaks, which it probably won't. I think most I of the leverage situations at this point. There's just no news. Okay, you're setting it up. Yeah, good. <laughs> the only the only trade that I think that could happen before the draft starts that would affect our picks and we would know enough to actually change destinations on today's show would be if the Patriots traded back beforehand at the sure. three spot. Monty Ansafor at the four spot has already kind of established that he won't trade the pick until they're on the clock and they know who's ahead of them. There's a lot of leverage there when you know – the player that a team wants to come up and get is there. And right now there's there's question marks. We're going to go into our draft predictions, but there's you know, we know who number one is. But beyond that, like there's question marks on which quarterback's going and who has, you know, fallen in love with Drake May or Jaden Daniels or JJ McCarthy. So uh if we don't have any other news, we're gonna jump right in. You guys ready for this? Let's go. All right, by the way, I encourage everybody to join us immediately following round one on NFL Plus. Tonight we will have the Fantasy Footballers Draft Special featuring instant reactions to all the first-round picks, our thoughts, the, the the way that, you know, is it a good fit? Are these teams and these players the right match? What surprises happened through the draft? Inevitably, what wide receiver went significantly later than we expected them to go or significantly higher. And, and it will be exclusive on NFL Plus. So yep. it, it won't be aired um, anywhere else. It won't be on our YouTube channel. So if you want to check it out, join us then. We'll be there live. I would say that it will be – it's going to be fun, entertaining, informative, and cathartic. Like, the, something is going to happen in the first round that makes you sad for your dynasty team. Or something's going to happen that makes you ecstatic for your dynasty team. I'm just and we're going to have all those feelings with you. I know. the 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 It wasn't manufactured, but it was built upon as the time rolled through this, this Adonai Mitchell v. Troy Franklin situation that Andy and I have where um, he's much lower on Troy Franklin. I'm very high on Troy Franklin. He's much higher on Adonai Mitchell. I'm very low on Adonai Mitchell. We are genuinely completely and utterly ro rooting as hard as we can for the demise of <laughs> not the players but of each other just in those two so when i'm watching the first just round a that's, little collateral damage you know just this this kid who's trying to live his dream jay <laughs> look it's about you want him to fail it's about dunking on andy <laughs> that's all this is and i want to do it and he wants to dunk on me so what the nice thing is more than likely someone's getting a boom shakalaka yeah, uh, is that that's a dunk? That's a dunk. Yeah. Okay, that's a yeah. I NBA, mean, dunk NBA Jam. Yeah. The mock drafts are flowing. Boom shakalaka! Thank and you. Uh, we'll get into our predictions. There's a lot of players we're going to talk through where we think they're going. Some we agree, some we don't agree. And then, of course, uh, last year you guys tied <laughs> with the most correct predictions. Yeah, it, we'll leave it at that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was we, we won, Mike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A win and, is a and win. And you know what's crazy is you guys tied with the same amount, uh -huh. and I was just one behind. That's true. I was hey, one behind. That's true. Oh, a loss is a loss. Yeah, we and doubled you up. <laughs> we doubled you up, sucker. <laughs> and to be clear, we all had Bryce Young. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, that's what <laughs> the NFL draft B. Cray. All right. Let's start at the quarterback position. This is uh, our layup. Caleb Williams currently minus 20,000 to oh, go number man. one. I have him going to, of course, the 49ers. Yeah, it's via trade-up. No, up. Bears. Bears, 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 right? Yeah. We're, we're yes, in agreement. We're all yeah. Bears. Move on. We'll talk about him for his career. Jaden Daniels. Let's talk about Jaden Daniels. We go. And uh, he is the favorite, betting-wise, to be the number two pick. That is certainly not everything. And uh, it's worth remembering, at this time last year, within the week leading up to the draft, not only was it put out there that somehow the Texans didn't like C.J. Stroud, uh -huh. but – Will Levis was suddenly everybody's favorite. When we recorded this show last year, Will Levis was plus 150 on the sports books, the money lines, plus 150 to be the number two overall pick. Banana Rama! 
<laughs> Thank you. And he, just as a reminder, went in the number two round yeah. of the NFL draft. So, Jaden Daniels, uh, let's let's go. Who do you have him going to? Uh, Mike and I, I think, are in agreement we here. Are. He is the number two pick. Goes to the Manders. That's kind of been if if you um, if you watch what the coaches have said, what they value, what they're seeking after. It really does seem to line up with Jaden Daniels. Uh, I don't think anyone really knows the answer. There there doesn't seem to be any insider coming out saying that we're sure that this is going to happen. You've got the infamous crazy Top Golf meeting of the last week where they brought like a dozen prospects all together. All the quarterbacks were there, and you had Drake May talk about how it was one of his favorite meetings, and then apparently the agent of Jaden Daniels said they didn't like it, so I don't know. I don't know, but I, I think he goes to the Manders, Jaden Daniels at two. Yep. So we've got we've got Jaden Daniels and Drake May flipped. I have Jaden Daniels going three to the Patriots. You guys have Drake May going three to the Patriots. I do. And then I have Drake May going two to the Commanders. I think they go the, the Drake May route. And uh, so this will be a point of differentiation between the three of us. It will. And I have Drake May at three to the Patriots, but I'm – I don't know. I think that this might be where everyone's mock draft explodes. As in the – Trade or May at, dropping? Yes. As as in the Patriots trade out of the pick, let someone else spend way up for the project that is Drake May, or they just even go a different direction. Take like Take Marvin here. Interesting. Yeah, I I think um, I think the odds of four quarterbacks are still pretty good to to top the draft. We'll but, see. Uh, so we have we've got Jaden Daniels and Drake May flipped. You two and myself. Moving on to another quarterback prospect. This is where a trade is very likely. But JJ McCarthy. I, I have him going to the Vikings. Either via trade or just at eleven. Yeah, that can, yeah, yeah. McCarthy is very, very interesting. He seems to profile as a, a little, a little bit. There, are, there are some similarities with Will Levis, not in play style or player, but in the situation, the kind of using this as fodder to heat up the quarterback market. Every single year, there is someone that is kind of super hyped because we went into this draft cycle when it first started and the the season of the NFL was over and it was like let's look towards rookies as JJ McCarthy might be a first rounder like he was a presumed second rounder and it's like I think he's gonna sneak in to the first round all the way to like he's got a chance to be taken at number two and so those guys usually fall but um I will say I, so I've got him go to the Vikings like you Andy uh the Vikings have to leave this draft with a quarterback like I can't imagine a world where they're not paying to get some quarterback. So I because they could trade, there's rumors of them trading to the three for Drake May, to the four for uh McCarthy, to five, to eight. There's so many spots they could trade to and grab McCarthy. I I think the most likely destination is McCarthy to the Vikings. Let me let me throw one thing in real quick. I think the comp isn't Will Levis. I think the comp is Mac Jones. I think that's the one where sure. Mac Mac Jones was rumored to be um a potential target at, at what was it, three for where Trey Lance yep. ends up going. They trade up. They take Trey Lance. They don't take Mac Jones. Jones goes 15 That's a to the great. Patriots. That's why I think he could go at 11 and oh. just sit there. But there's going to be so many opportunities, and teams have come out and been pretty overt in their desire for a quarterback like the Raiders, the Giants, and the Broncos, and the Vikings. And because of that competitive environment, I won't be shocked if, you know, if it's not Arizona at four, Chargers at five, Giants, you know, obviously could take them at six or, or move up one spot to guarantee – Another team doesn't move up. So you and I, Jason, we have McCarthy, by whatever measure, uh -huh. end, ending up with the Vikings. Mike? I got him going to the Giants of either living the Jason's dream of the Arizona Cardinals trade back a few spots, then trade back up to the Chargers to get Marvin Harrison, uh, or or he just falls to number six. And, I mean, if, if I'm one of these teams – especially if I need, like on the surface, I need a quarterback. I am overloading everybody with, yeah, oh, of course, of course we're going to get one of these quarterbacks. That is that is like the the best possible outcome if you aren't really planning on drafting one of these quarterbacks is someone else doing it. Just like in fantasy football. Uh -huh. When people draft quarterbacks in front of you that you weren't targeting, you're just, 
you're rubbing your hands. Like this is this is fantastic. This is the best thing that could have happened. All right, so McCarthy to the Giants for Mike. We both have the Vikings, Jason. Two more quarterbacks we will make draft predictions for. I think these are players that, you know, you're going to learn pretty quickly how the league views them or whether one team has fallen in love with them. Michael Penix Jr. out of Washington, Bo Nix out of Oregon. It looks like we all have a prediction for Michael Penix Jr. of the Raiders. Now, yep. I I threw him in at 70, the Raiders' 77th pick. Jason thought maybe the 44th. I don't know which one you thought, Mike. I have just not in the first. So okay. I believe he is now, uh, last I saw, was like minus 200 to be selected in the first yeah. round. Yeah, people so are falling in pe love. People are rising on him. I really, really wanted to put him to Seattle. I think it makes so much sense. His former coach is now the OC. Um, you know, his, his national title uh, reaching coach is the OC for Seattle. He is playing right next to is that where what he you was. Describe playing. a non-winner. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was like, what? What is the nice verb? A for national title reaching. <laughs> I mean, they lost, Contending? but they got there. Contending. Contender. Contending. Re yeah, the reacher? national title contending know. team. <laughs> so bad. They got to the national title. There we go. There you go. That's great. And um, you know, he he was. They very were good. reaching. <laughs> and they just, they couldn't grasp. <laughs> yeah, they weren't tall enough to grab the trophy <laughs> off the top shelf. But his coach is now the OC for Seattle. He's been playing right there where this team will have watched him a lot. There's So Dark Horse Seattle. Dark Horse Seattle, but I, I the Raiders are the team that's connected with him the most. Bo Nix, I have gone to the Giants. So, Mike, you already uh, said that you thought McCarthy was yep. going to the Giants. Jason and I both have Bo Nix to the Giants. Yeah, and we kind of see it almost in reverse of uh, Michael Penix where – You've got him going to the Giants Giants in the second round. I've got him going to the Giants in the third round as as a faller. And I have him going to the, the Denver Broncos at some point in the Giants. The, <laughs> the Giants. Giants. The Giants. Okay. That that T. It's a slippery it's, fella. Yeah. It's, it's a really important <laughs> part of the Giants name. Deucer's Alley, you enjoying yourselves back there? <laughs> Always. <laughs> Uh, we don't. I edit. told you, I'm so excited. I'm vibrating. <laughs> I, I yeah. can't even pronounce all the letters. <laughs> so Mike, it's you, so much quicker <laughs> if you don't say the whole name. Jeez. Yeah, I got to go into the Denver Broncos. All right, but next to the Broncos, <laughs> we'll take a break. Compose ourselves. Come back with some running back draft predictions. All right, we're going to turn the page, make our predictions at the running back spot, and we'll start, I guess, with Trey Benson. Yeah, you're darn right we will. So uh, we have three different destinations for Trey Benson. This is when it gets uh, yeah. simultaneously extremely fun. You get to root for the destination you, you, um, you want to see happen, and yet very difficult, especially at running back where you don't know Who's going to break the seal? What team is going to finally say, we're going to take a running back in this draft? I could see a lot of teams with, with all of the needs and where the running back draft class is. They could Simultaneously, everybody could kind of like, wait, 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 and then you might have them go. Um, but Trey Benson, I think it's the Raiders. I think all the Zamir White uh, ambitions will begin to, uh, you know, oh, the balloon be, will get popped. That would be R.I.P.? Yeah, the balloon will get popped, and I think it's the Raiders at 44. That would be awesome. If he's a top 50 pick, um, th this is my favorite running back in the class. I, if he gets the draft capital of a team committing to him like that would be, uh, I would be all in. And because he is my number one pack, personally, even though this is not the odds-on favorite, I have him going to the best spot, the spot that I think will be the first oh, running man. back drafted in the uh, the 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 NFL draft, which is spot fifty six, second round pick to the Dallas Cowboys. I got him going five overall, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, but to that to the team that has the fifth overall, I'm I'm sending him to the Chargers. I'm calling for the absolute chaos of uh, opinions. Where uh, I talked about this on the 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 Dynasty podcast this week, but just. Like, what happens in the league if the Chargers don't take Blake Corum? And, like, 
they take a they take a different running back. Blake Corm's there for them to 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 draft him, and they pick someone else. What does that say about? I'd look, it could I be, get it. No, it I, could be nothing, but it it could be something. I I still I, it's all about the draft capital that the Chargers actually have, and the fact that they're at thirty seven, which is so high in the second round. I don't think that they go. That's why I'm not going. You know, one of the top guys, right? Which that which is fine because if like if they want Benson. They either have to take him there, or I don't think just, he makes it to the next. Just trade yeah. back a couple picks because I, he's. That's true. I think he's going in the. Second. I will say that you know the the trade back at from five where they are now seems like one of the more likely contenders to them. get him another second round pick exactly. or another third. Benson, I got Raiders. Jason has Dallas, and Mike with the Chargers. Jonathan Brooks, that's who I have going to Dallas. Same. That's Mike and I are in agreement there. I think most people are in agreement. That's the most common connection. Um, I believe I, I saw his uh, line was like 56 and a half as his draft spot. So it's like, do you think he goes to 56 <laughs> or do you not think he goes to 56? Um, I, it seems very likely. I have a really weird uh, destination here. I was going through. Not, I don't think it's weird. Not many teams really have running back needs. Um, they A lot of the ones that did signed players this offseason I'm going to have a team that signed one of these players this offseason draft them uh, I've got him going to Green Bay in the second round they have a later second round pick I think he fits the type of players they've utilized they have always had a committee AJ Dillon is not good um, and they don't know about Josh Jacobs who's essentially on a one-year prove-it deal his contract lasts longer but that's if it doesn't work out. So if he slips to them, I I don't think it would be a bad pick for the Packers. Yeah, I I think Jonathan Brooks may be the surprise and go higher than people expected a running back to go. I I think Dallas could trade down from their first round pick and position themselves into first, early second for Brooks. That's my um, I guess scenario. Sure. Blake Corum, I've got him going to the Chargers at sixty nine. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, pretty nice. I'll, Does I'll that stop. chalk taste, you losers? Uh, it tastes chalky, but <laughs> I, I do think, uh, look, they're the Harbaugh, uh, Greg Roman, Chargers, they're just rebuilding. Giro, please. Uh, Giro, thank, thank you. you. Uh, I think they are just rebuilding what has worked for them in the past, so that's why they're bringing over guys from Baltimore. I think they're going to bring in guys from Michigan. That's why I have them drafting the better running back. The Trey Benson. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I got Blake Corm going to the Ravens. Uh, it's an, it's another one of those things of, yeah, you know, there's, there's not a ton of killer landing spots. This is what the draft does to us. This is why we end up, end up sad or laughing hysterically at other people in the league, but they, they need somebody. Yeah. They got the King there, but they, they need some depth on there. And I think you can get Blake Corum, you know, later than, uh, not a really expensive pick. Braylon Allen, the last running back, we'll make a prediction for. I have him going to the Buccaneers at oh. pick eighty nine. How which would is, you feel about that for Rashad White? Um, not great. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it just. I think they'd love to have a committee there. I, th I still think Rashad White would be a great fantasy asset because he's going to do so much work in the passing game. I, I think they are willing to go in on a running back third, fourth round. You know, if it's Allen later beyond the third, probably feel less intimidated. But um, I, I, I'm going to go Tampa with, with Braylon Allen. I'm going to go with the Buffalo Bills, who, with their actions, have said repeatedly, we want, we, we, we want the beef in here. We don't want James Cook to be our goal line running back. We'd rather have Latavius Murray. We'd rather take a flyer, a failed flyer, on Leonard Fournette. They want a thick boy in there, and I've got Braylon Allen going there. I actually think that's a really I, – I, I hadn't seen that pick, and I haven't really heard this connection, but I think that's brilliant. Um, they do want Thank a you. bigger back, and they have looked at investing. You know, They were in the Christian McCaffrey market. They, they right. care about the position, so that's interesting. I've got him going to the Raiders. He seems like he's got that kind of mentality. And how's this for a stat? He'll be the first running back ever to play his entire rookie season before turning 21. Guess who can't go to them casinos? Braylon Allen. So come on down to Vegas. Grow into your man body where we don't have to worry about a rookie. Dude, you don't hold have on. To. If this guy grows into a man body, oh, the seen? NFL is in such trouble. He's, yeah, he's got a man body already. He's going to be 7 okay. foot 345. 
No, he he. I'm just saying, you know, they but don't he, have to worry about him. That's funny. Uh, getting distracted by the shiny lights of Vegas, his rookie season. Yeah, no, that's a that's a good point. They did deny him entry. Yeah. Wide receiver time, guys. Oh boy, let's have some fun. I think we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh my gosh, we're doing ten wideouts to all be right. predicted today. Whew. So we've got the time. Marvin Harrison, let's make it easy. I think he's. I think they stay. At for the Cardinals, we Marvin just, Harrison. I think as a show, we refuse any other way. If one of us put him somewhere else, you'd be off the show. Yeah, you walk the plank. So he's going to be a Cardinal. My hope is that it comes via trade back, trade up, or in the case of the Giants, just trade back and stay. And maybe you know you uh, you watch Harbaugh grab an offensive tackle. Um, but yes, Marvin Harrison will be a Cardinal, or I will revolt. Let's get to where we have some uh, difference of opinion. Malik Neighbors, I believe he goes to the Giants at six. Jason, you have the Giants as well. I think most likely Cardinals stick where they're at. The Chargers are the trade candidate. Someone comes up and takes McCarthy, so that temptation's off the board for the Giants, someone being the Vikings, and the Giants end up taking one of the best players in the draft in Malik Neighbors. I went back and forth. I, I have the draft happening the same way that you see it and this morning I just could not decide do I want it to be neighbors do I want it to be Odunze and it's for the exact same reason which is the Giants over the last few years they have drafted you know they drafted Wandale Robinson a, a smaller slot speedy guy they've drafted Jalen Hyatt a guy that we like that kind of has some similarities you know they spent a third rounder and so it's like okay so Malik neighbors is their type they like these fast guys who maybe had some slot college production and so that is neighbors. So it's like, okay, that makes sense. Or you can say, well, they've already got some of those guys, so they should draft a Dunze. They don't really have that possession mammoth man. And um, in the end, I went Malik Neighbors because I think he is universally seen as the number two wide receiver. He's my number two wide receiver, and they're going to have the chance to take either. So Malik Neighbors, I'm with you, Andy, to the Giants. And this is the pick where fantasy players with their rookie picks start to weep uncontrollably. Because I think Malik Neighbors goes to the Tennessee Titans. I have the Giants taking McCarthy. And the way that I've been hearing the the GM from Tennessee talking about <clears throat> the wide receiver position and blue chip players, yeah, I, I think that they're going to make the splash and this is where everything I don't, just goes bad. I don't disagree with that. I think it's very possible that you have to believe what the general manager has done. And he brought, he brought in... Tony Pollard brought in Calvin Ridley by paying him so much money, like equipping Will Levis with a prospect that can be seen in the same likeness of a Jamar Chase. It makes sense. When it's like, look at this. Yeah, you know, with – And it's unexpected. With Yeah, it's unexpected, which expect the unexpected. But but that wide receiver core – Oh, man. What would you do with Will Levis? You'd have to, you'd have to kind of believe. If you're yeah. telling me he's got Malik Neighbors, Hopkins, Calvin Ridley, Pollard out of the backfield – He's, he, you I mean, you're going to find out. Yeah. You're going to find out if he can be an NFL quarterback. Con quo. If he can't, yeah, if he can't get it done with those weapons, he can't get it done anywhere. So moving on to Roma Dunze, I actually think uh, for the reasons Mike said about Tennessee, I think Adunze goes to the Bears, but not at nine. I think they actually move up to secure Ooh. him and swap picks with the Titans, who are sitting there with the ability to take one of the top. Wide receivers, I think they do it defensively to protect against the Jets, maybe stealing away Roma Madunze. I think the Bears, much like your case for equipping Will right. Levis, they do that to equip, you know, Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, oh. Roma Madunze, and now DeAndre Swift. Be, You'd have to believe in Caleb Williams as a rookie. And I have Rome going to the Bears as well. It's, it's if it really happens. The hype for Caleb Williams will be just it, astronomical. People will be so in and ready for him because I don't I don't know that I've like off the top of my head. Can you think of a better starting situation for a a, a first overall pick whose team was getting better towards the second half of the year on the defensive side of the football? You fix the offense. There's like, never been one. There's it, it, would, it is the number one for for a number one overall pick. There's never been a quarterback that's gone into a situation. If they grab Odunze, yeah. which is right now the favorite, like they are, 
Uh, Odunze is the favorite for the number nine pick. That is most mock drafts. You see him there everywhere. This is why I've got the Jets, who are sitting at 10, trading a little flip-flop with the Falcons, hopping the Bears to get Odunze, because I don't think he gets 210, and that's who I believe they want. All right, All right Bears, Bears, Jets. Let's go to Brian Thomas Jr. This is, uh, by the way, when we went out, all three of us and built our predictions out, built our mock drafts out, and thought through this for this show. This was done very independently. So you, you have a couple times when you think you're going to catch somebody by surprise. Uh -huh. Jason and I, we did not uh, catch each other by surprise. I was so upset because both of us, independently, like you said, we were excited to have this surprise of like, we think. He's going to go to the Colts right in the middle of the draft. The Colts could Pick use 15. Him. Yeah. And uh, Ryan Thomas Jr. You've got Michael Pittman there, a great possession guy. You've got Josh Downs, who's a nice little slot option. And Alec Pierce, yeah, he's he a just deep, doesn't. He's a deep just, threat. He's a deep threat, but he is not ever. He, he's it not going to be the guy. Work. He's not who they hoped he was. He's not Brian Thomas Jr. And if you want to say. Hey, Shane Steichen, what do you want on your high-flying Anthony Richardson-led offense? They want a Brian Thomas Jr. If he's there, they they are a traits machine. They are always drafting guys who break the combine, and Brian Thomas Jr. broke the combine. So I think it makes sense for the team needs, for how they draft. It would be a great fit for me, and I'm already all in on Anthony Richardson. That would be awesome. There has been some kind of a later breaking news about medical stuff for Brian Thomas Jr. possibly needing a uh, some shoulder work, and so I think that could drop him a bit in the draft. Still, I still have him going in the first round, but I have uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers taking him because I I think that he falls a little bit just because of those concerns, and they they need somebody. Okay, so you got the Steelers. That would be yep. pick twenty for you. I since I'm the host of the show okay. and I'm in control of where we go next. I find it very disrespectful that you would put Adonai Mitchell so far down the list of where we're predicting him. <laughs> and because you just talked about the Steelers, I have the Steelers trading up to 17 okay. to take Adonai Mitchell. So I'm going Adonai Mitchell to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, I think this is uh you know, they lost Deontay Johnson. They need a, a, a kind of a fundamentally uh, explosive compliment to George Pickens who ran I think the second most fly routes of anybody in the league I think Mitchell is a perfect compliment to him so I I'm, we're turning the page we're going to Adonai Mitchell right now right. that is fair um I, I Adonai Mitchell I think Schefter <laughs> Schefter just came out and was talking about how he thinks he's going to go really high in the draft definitely in the top uh 20 picks I've got him I've got the NFL having more Logic than that, and logic. Um, I believe yeah. in agreeing with you. You are banishing him. I am banishing him. <laughs> you put is, him in the second round. I put him, but really early in the second round. Don't oh, worry, okay. Andy. He's going to the Panthers. <laughs> I am putting, You're condemning him. I am trying to send him to Siberia. <laughs> This is what I'm trying to do. <laughs> Panthers, you're going to love Adonai Mitchell. He's exactly what you need. A big, strong athlete. Um, you know, he should he dropped. He was supposed to be a first-rounder. And now here you go. You left the first round, and everyone's going to be talking about Adonai Mitchell. And that you can have Did him. it send shivers through your spine when you saw, like, PFF's mock yesterday had Adonai Mitchell ahead of Brian Thomas? I, Did that hurt you a little I bit? I fully expect Adonai Mitchell to be a first-rounder. Um, I really do. He, he – when – when you have the combine he had, I, I said it right afterwards. I said You he, fully don't. You just made him a second-round pick. So in my personal mock draft that I made that was all of these picks, I, I had him going to the Chiefs. You're willing to in lose in this round. competition? I am willing to lose. I am trying to put it into existence. I wow. came to this show, Doc. I'm like, I can't do that. He's a Panther. I want him to be a Panther. Let's go, Panthers. Okay. Mike, where do you got him? So I, I have him going. I have him falling into the second as well. Uh yeah, you could. This what we. I'm allowed to shake my head. Oh, the, oh, the, the crowd people. love it. The people love it. <laughs> Clowns. Uh, and yeah, I just, I, I am trying to willing something into existence. So maybe to willing. Yeah. It, so Andy willing just, it, brother. It, it, this isn't Ad and I just kind of. He, I don't know. He was the collateral player. damage for I, you and your little mock but, draft. But a little stupid mock draft. I put him with the Giants, and this what I'm will trying to will into existence is teams. If you're going to take a quarterback, take one of these guys. Start the process of equipping with weapons immediately. 
So I have the uh, I have the Giants figuring out a way to get him in the second it's round. Be to go hard for them to pick him in the second round when he had gone like 15, 20 picks early. That would make That's it make very it difficult. Well, this will be fun. This will be fun. All right. Circling back to Lad McConkey, we're actually all in agreement on Lad McConkey. We have them all going to the Buffalo Bills. I have uh, Buffalo having to trade up to do it, though. I think they move up four picks with Dallas to get Lad McConkey and secure him, but I think we're expecting the Bills to be major players in the wide receiver area. They should be. Which will give a little boost of confidence for Josh Allen uh, heading into the season as well as uh, throwing into question you know, some of the excitement around maybe Don Kincaid or Khalil Shakir that you have right now. But we all have them being players for one of these guys. It, it might not be McConkey, but we all went that direction. I love the chaos it will cause for rookie drafts. Yeah, of, he's a – Go ahead. He's just a perfect fit for their team. I mean, uh, Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen, they, they face so much zone because they've got s such great over-the-top arms. And Lad McConkey and, you know, someone like Troy Franklin that are just absolute world beaters against zone, um, the, Wait, you want the fit would be great. <laughs> so, yeah, we've all got him going to the Bills. I, I just love it. Get open, sit in that zone, and let Josh Allen laser beam you a ball. He'll He'll, he'll be great there. Troy Franklin, I have him going to the Chiefs with I, the 32nd pick. I have him going to the Kansas City Chiefs oh, as please. well. <laughs> please. It please would I, it would be glorious to me if it happened, but Chiefs seem to really favor speed, and they may have a wide receiver I don't uh, think depth that's, problem. I don't think it's the best situation for Troy Franklin. I uh, actually do not believe that. I think it would be a wonderful – it was the same argument for, for Josh Allen. When you've got a guy that is great at zone, he was over three yards per out uh, – or uh, targets per out run against uh, zone and against man. I, um, he, I, it's I, not that he couldn't succeed there. It's that I think they – this is a team going for a three-peat. I don't think the rookie's going to have a fundamental role this season. That's well, all. I think maybe long-term you'll be okay. Yeah, I mean, Rushy Rice was a rookie last year that was going for a uh, repeat, and they found a way to get him involved. So I, I Late think, in the season. Sure, but I mean, I would say that Rushy Rice is a hit right now for fantasy and was valuable for fantasy. I, I think it would be a good spot. I, okay. I, well, I haven't gone there. I just don't love him as much for fantasy. Yeah, the DraftKings Sportsbook line has him only in a, as a 27% chance to go in the first round at all. Yep. I, I think it's obviously far more likely that he leaves the first round, but because of the Troy Franklin and I Mitchell fun we've been having this offseason, I am giving the NFL a ton of credit. Oh, of course. They <laughs> agree with you. That the Rams in the first round right there, I think they're pick 19. They're just going to take him, baby. Take Troy Franklin uh, as your, uh, you know, just add him to Sean McVay's offense. All right. It's a bold pick. I, I think the Chiefs are the only team in play for Troy Franklin in the first round. I think that's why you're sitting at 27% as the league must see the Chiefs as having about a one in four chance of taking him there. But Troy Franklin, I know you love him. Moving on to a guy that wasn't in uh, PFF's top 10, Xavier Worthy. Uh, Jason, you have him going to the Arizona Cardinals. Would this be uh, Whoa. Yeah, I, I, I've seen a second round or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Second round, they're at the top of the second. Right now he looks to – he projects to be a late first, early second round player. And I've got him not – you know, obviously I've got Marvin Harrison going there as well. A lot of – bigger deeper mock drafts have the Cardinals taking multiple wide receivers they could honestly take like three or four wide receivers and have those just be their entire wide receiver core they just don't you know Greg Dorch uh Michael Wilson Michael Wilson they're they've got spots to fill there the uh it reminds me the Cardinals did that who were the two Hassan, um Hakeem Butler and Andy Isabella were the same draft uh, yeah whoops that worked out well <laughs> Uh, that's why you got to take multiple shots, man. Mike. You've got him going to the Panthers. I do. Uh, that, that's a that makes sense. And then I've got the Eagles I feel at fifty three. My Panthers, just my my logic there is that I I think the NFL may still be concerned with size, and but then speed comes in, and if, if I feel like the Panthers might fall into the just that love of like we got to get the fastest guy on the field. All right, quick break. Back with a few more predictions. Keon Coleman, we'll talk about him next. He is at a 19% chance to go in the first round. He would be somebody that 
It wouldn't surprise me if a team fell in love. It reminds me a little bit of Ayuk surprising us going late first for the 49ers. Um, I have him going to the Panthers in the second round. Yeah, I, I do we think— We all have the Panthers picking up a wideout. Yes, there, there's a couple of teams that really need to add someone, and they've got the draft capital to do it. The Panthers are sitting there at the top of the second, and they could probably take their time to figure out which one of the wide receivers left over. I also think that wide receivers drop. I know that there's been a question of like, well, this is a really good wide receiver class. But I actually think it's like the the top three are amazing, absolutely dominant, great wide receivers. Then you've got a couple of guys. But because this next tier is so large, I think teams are going to say in the first round, they're going to go, I can get another, I can get one of these guys in this tier in the second, maybe even the third on day two. So I think a lot of these guys drop to the second. I've got them going to the Saints uh, about the middle of the, the second round. I sorry, I lost. I was lost in thought over here. I have Keon Coleman going to uh, the Manders. Of again, the theme of taking a quarterback and then give him, giving him somebody. And one more name, we'll bring it up. I want you guys to talk about him um, a little bit more extensively because he's not one of the names that gets brought up in the top five, six, seven wide receivers. But Xavier Leggett, I have him going to the Saints. I do think they add a weapon. They they're losing weapons in that offense, so I think the Saints make sense. Jason, the Raiders, Mike, the Patriots. But talk about Xavier Leggett for a second so people know what to expect <laughs> if he surprises. Because we had a couple of years ago, uh, it was Wandale, right? Wandale was not talked about nearly at all going into the draft and ends up being a first-round draft pick by the Giants, right? Uh, Second-round second draft rounder. pick. But it, it was a name that people didn't really understand or know about. Leggett might be in that category. Leggett's got the weirdest profile of any player I've ever scouted in my entire uh, life. So talk Spe about why. Especially is, when you compare that with the film. Yeah, he is a fifth-year breakout. You heard that, right? Um, we don't like a late breakout. A late breakout is like a third-year breakout. When guys break out in their fourth year, it almost never works. This is Now they're like they're 22, they're 23 years old playing against you know 18-year-olds out there sometimes, and then, yeah, they, they, can, they can dominate then. This is a fifth year breakout. Um, it's not going to work. It never <laughs> works. However, I'm in. I'm in, baby. He was. But it might so, work for. But us. it might work for us. Um, the tape, the production, his final year was unbelievably great. He was dominant. He is so athletic. He hit the. He hit a faster speed, miles per hour, on the field last year than the fastest player in the NFL this last season. He outran Tyreek at top speed. He outran DK Metcalf at top speed. And he is more of that DK Metcalf type of build. He's a giant, uh, super athletic guy that I, when I watch the film, I loved it. When I look at the production as last year, I loved it. The only thing I don't like is that he spent four years doing nothing. And when I say doing nothing, I'm not saying like he only had 700 yards. Have, he only had 500 yards. yards. I, I don't. It. You have him? Yeah. So here's his career. Uh, year one. 80. 80. 80. 80 yards. Oh, next total year. on the season. Yeah. 80 receiving yards. We went up to 113 the next year, then back down to 63. <laughs> then we skyrocket up to 167. Skyrocket. Skyrocket before a fifth year breakout. 71 receptions, 1,255 yards, and seven touchdowns. Yeah, it's, it's wild. Huh? I don't know how what the player and the human that was in that fifth year, how could the coach could not get him involved in even the fourth year? This is one of those things where it's tough when the profile versus the reality. Like, if he's that good of a player, he's worthy of being picked, and he's worthy of being picked highly. It's also when you indict the coach, it's like it acts like Xavier Leggett was the same player five years before. Like, we forget that they are – like they they work out and then they practice and then they get better at things and then and they then, find the cave of wonders. I mean, <laughs> what well, Joe Burrow? Joe Burrow had one season, okay, at the NFL level, or sorry, at the college level that yep. was an impressive uh, top tier. So I, you know, you you do figure things out. Some players figure things out. Now, who do you say he ran faster than? Everybody faster than DK Metcalf, even faster, faster than, than Papa Josh, Hill. faster than Papa Josh. Who is who is now? Papa Josh way is way faster than the in his very late 40s and i can't believe you're gassing mid, him up like this mid 40s mid very late to mid looks late is mid i get it um, but he gets faster than papa josh who just won a 40 yard dash in our back alley against a 
20 something um uh, Walmart Borgononi? <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, man. Is that what you're saying? That is what he's I'm faster. saying. I'm saying oh. he's even faster than that. Brock Bowers, final prediction for today's show. I've got him going to the Jets at 10. Uh, so I've got the Chargers trading back from five, and the Chargers need pass catching options, and they need offensive line help. And so I feel like Brock Bowers kind of fills both of those needs. You get a little bit of offensive line work, help in the run game, and a receiving option. Plus, you have the Baltimore Ravens West trying to be reestablished, redeveloped with Gus Edwards, J.K. Dobbins, and and G. Rowe. And so get yourself your Mark Andrews. And this is the one and only destination that I will be in on him as a rookie. Otherwise, I will take my normal fantasy football stance. And then I am having just – I'm going – Contrarian here with Brock Bowers having a little bit of a fall in the first round. And once, like, what, there's a certain point where once you make it through these picks, assuming no trades, there's just teams don't, like, teams just recently invested. And I have the Seattle Seahawks, who I know they recently invested. Uh, they gave Noah Fant a, a, a bit of a contract extension. But Seattle is, is a team that they don't care if they just invested in a position. If the best player available is Brock Bowers, so I've I've got him I've got him falling a little I bit. I don't I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Tight ends have not done well when they've been picked in the first. They haven't been usually worthy of that draft selection in the NFL. I believe only one tight end since 2015 has re-signed a contract with the team that drafted him in the first round, which is uh, Najoku recently. All right, uh, Kyle crunched the numbers based on our predictions and the current odds. He handicaps it as you two, once again, aligned hand-in-hand. 34% hand. chance chance to win. I'm at 32%. So uh, pretty close in terms of, uh, you know, where things lie. Obviously, I'll win. So <laughs> I, will, um, I will say, before, before you stop, I need to share a fear that Mike. Yeah. Spiders? Uh, well, I think that's been widely acknowledged. Also, okay. if you do share that on uh, uh, on X, just know you will be muted. I will never see from you again. Um, He's not joking. He no, will. that's not a joke. <laughs> Even like mute, if, if we've talked you. a bunch and we always communicate on X, yeah. you Good go friends. ahead and share that. You're going to be muted. I will never see from you again. Anyways, but you've been talking about equipping the quarterback you take yeah. with the wide receiver. That's we've seen hope. it. We've seen it a ton. It is something GMs do. It makes sense. It puts these two guys on a rookie contract together. And we've seen it succeed, and and I started to think about. I remember this one time it really did succeed for a franchise that was struggling, and it was a really nice combination of AJ Green and oh, Dalton. Sure. And my fear started to set in of how, because they took AJ Green first, yes, and then they got the quarterback. And I'm sitting there looking at the Patriots, uh, the Patriots. and I'm like, if they grab. Bo Nix in the second to pair with Marvin. Don't do it, Patriots. I don't do it. Leave me my Marvin. <laughs> huh? I don't think they're taking a. I don't think they'll take Marvin. I really don't. Good. I don't think there's any don't chance. Do it, Mike does. So it'll be interesting to watch. So, um, we're done. Predictions draft Wait. coming tonight. Yes, the draft tonight. Remember, right after, and even you know, probably like five minutes while the first round is ending nfl plus we will be live with our initial reactions our hopes our dreams maybe tears yeah jason if you think he's kind of you know intense this morning wait till this Off. afternoon i will say the ratings for if the patriots take marv at three the ratings for our special off the charts <laughs> everyone, everyone will, will show up to see three broken grown men I just want to watch him cry live. Goodness, I, I I don't I don't think I'm willing to accept that as a possibility. No. Get your NFL Plus ready. And then uh, Ultimate Draft Week, win a spot in our listener yes. league. Go to ultimatedraftkit.com right now. As this show's closing down, you can check it out. You can learn about the Dynasty Pass and all of the uh, features, tools, resources that we equip you with to help you set the foundation for your fantasy football draft, so that you can head towards um yeah and if you know a championship if you win the justin jefferson signed jersey as part of that deal just imagine how much more it'll be worth when he signs his new contract it's gonna be insanity thank you for joining us today have a great time tonight and we'll see you after the draft
on NFL Plus. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.